The Jets have won three straight. They're four and two, and you're darn right they're keeping receipts. New York Post Jets beat writer Brian Costello is on the line now to talk about how head coach Robert Sala has gotten this young team to not only buy in, but stack wins. Brian, let's get straight into it because it seems like they found some sort of identity, finally. So what's been the Robert Sala formula for success? I think it's classic NFL formula, Brandon, right? They're playing great defense right now. They're running the ball well with Brees Hall, and they're not making the killer mistakes. They they haven't turned the ball over in the last two games. And really, if you go back to the second half in Pittsburgh, they've been doing this. They, they haven't been making big mistakes. Uh, no killer. The killer penalties haven't come like they've come in the past for them. And just the defense is playing lights out right now, particularly the defensive line in Green Bay just dominated that game. And if you think about it, the first three games with Joe Flacco at quarterback, they threw the ball 155 times yep. and three straight wins with Wilson. He's only thrown the ball 75 times. And let's talk about that defense because defensive tackle Quinnen Williams with the two-sack performance against the Packers is having himself a season. So how has his play turned around the Jets' defense? And is he playing himself into a payday? Yeah, he's just dominant right now. You know, he's the best player on the field. And that's saying something uh, with all the guys that were out there yesterday for both teams. He, he just, no one can block him uh, run game, pass game. He has five sacks already. He uh, blew up a play early in that game when Aaron Jones was in the backfield was in Aaron Rodgers' face basically all day. Uh, and when the jets can do that with Quinn and Williams and Carl Lawson and John Franklin Myers and Sheldon Rankins up front, they don't have to blitz. And now that they have people in coverage and the, the secondary is doing its job. Uh, it's a really big advantage if you can rush four, and that's what they're doing right now with Quinn Williams. And I do think he is playing himself into a very nice payday. Uh, he's, I, I thought the Jets might do it last year after last season, and they, they waited. And I, I think that the price is going up every week with Quinn Williams right now. In the words of Drake, yesterday's price is not today's price. So let's talk about how the Jets are one of the youngest teams in the NFL which one of these young bucks are playing like that so far? Do you think that these young bucks can sustain this early success? Yeah, I've been surprised at how quickly these rookies have played the way they have. Uh, Brees Hall, Sauce Gardner, um, they look like the, you know, the game's not too big for them. Garrett Wilson obviously had a big game in Cleveland. He's been a little quieter lately. Uh, Jermaine Johnson has a couple sacks. So they, they've been doing well, these, this rookie class. And I think they've benefited from their youth because uh, you, you have the rookies, you have the second year guys. I don't think they know what they don't know yet. Right. And they, I don't think they know they're, they're supposed to go into Lambeau and be intimidated by going into Lambeau and Aaron Rodgers. They were just there having fun and playing. So as long as they can keep doing that and not let the outside noise creep in, they'll, they'll, they'll be having success. I'm curious to see, you know, at some point expectations are going to come. They've been playing with no expectations so far. Now, he, as they, they stack the wins, people are going to have more expectations, and how do they handle that? Brian, before we go, I'd be remiss if I uh, didn't bring this up. Elijah Moore, a guy who I thought was going to have 100 catches on the season, wasn't targeted at all. He kind of said he didn't understand why. He tweeted that out in response to another beat writer's uh, tweet. Is there anything in there we should be looking at, or is it just, you know, let it go? That's just the way it flies sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been expecting some frustration from Elijah Moore, right? Uh, yeah. He has not been a big part of this offense all year. Garrett Wilson has kind of surpassed him in the packing order. Corey Davis has been a go-to guy. So, you know, on Sunday, I, I don't read too much into the zero targets on Sunday because hardly anyone had a lot of targets. Okay. I think Wilson had five maybe, and, and no one had more than two catches. They really ran the ball in the second half and didn't have a lot of receivers on the field. But – it's clearly something to monitor. And, you know, obviously I was thinking of Michael LaFleur and Robert Sala celebrating this win. And then they see that tweet and they're like, oh boy, here we, you know, we're gonna have to do something. So uh, not, not a good look by Elijah. You probably shouldn't have tweeted that, but um, you know, well, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll linger, but I, I do think the Jets will be trying to find them a way to get the ball soon. All right. We'll definitely keep our eye on that. Thank you, Brian, for joining us. Thanks, Brandon.